Shu and Art is known for that sketchy, painterly style that so many people love, the beautiful and complex eyes, and the well-drawn atmosphere and use of composition. I know a lot of you are wondering how you can draw like this too, so that's why I spent hours and hours of time and research to bring you this style study. So this study has been broken down into two parts. In part one of this style study, we went over eyes, mouths, process, and noses. Now it's time to discuss how Shu and Art achieves her lighting, rendering, and finishing effects. And yes, I did reuse the intro from part one of this study. But anyway, like before, I broke down this video into sections, so here are the times for each of these sections if you want to skip ahead to a certain part. And now let's start by recapping last week's video by going over her process. We know that she starts with a rough composition sketch, then does a couple more sketches to add in the details and refine it a little more. She calls the final sketch tracing. She then adds section colors and then base colors. If you want the details on these steps, just check out the part one video. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now after those steps, Shuan does her lighting and effects. That was briefly mentioned in the previous video, but now it's time to focus on it and go deeper into it. So once Shuan has the base colors, she says that she starts rendering first by changing the line art colors to fit the atmosphere. So you can see in this image here from one of her videos that she does this. After that, I think she makes a new layer on top of that and changes the layer mode to either multiply or overlay. I think it's usually multiply. Then, I watched her just shade over areas of the subject with the color scheme of the lighting. For example, in this one, the color scheme for the illustration was a dark bluish purple and pink. So those are the colors she used on this multiply layer. And in the same illustration, after Shuin's done with that, she will erase areas of that shading to create the effect of light. And a brush that can be used to make gradients was used. It might have been an airbrush, but I don't know for sure. The artist also talks about using overlay blending modes on new layers to further the color scheme and make it more saturated. Another thing Shuin does for some of her artworks is just editing the color of the shading layers ever so slightly until it looks good enough. And after the lighting is kind of finished, Shuin goes into rendering, so focusing more on the details instead of the full picture. The common way this is done is by I think just making a new layer with most likely no layer modes and color picking colors to further define places. Also going over areas a lot until it looks right to you. Smaller sized brushes are typically used in this stage. But like here, Shun will select colors of the hair and make strokes resembling the strands of the hair. The artist will also add small areas of lighting in places. This could be bounce lighting, rim lighting, or maybe light from a smaller light source that wouldn't affect it as much as the main light source. Shun also mentions looking at Macha's artwork while she's drawing for certain areas like hair. And speaking of hair, Shuin says that she tries to imagine it as ribbons. She also mentions using geometric shapes for shading the hair. Some rendering techniques were also named in one of her videos, such as changing the hue of the shading to make it more dynamic. So like, if the base color of something is pink, you can make the shading color purple or something. And now, let's focus on the finishing touches and effects that Shuin adds. Now there are many different kinds of effects the artist uses, and not all of them are used every time, but let's go over a few of them anyway. So in this illustration, Shuin used a very subtle screen tone here. Shuin also used a slight glitch effect here. I was able to copy that look pretty easily using one of Procreate's effect tools. I've also noticed that in places there are random geometric shapes in different colors. I think it's meant to add to the vibrancy and pop effect of this particular artwork. And in this illustration here, we can see that Shuin has used long strokes to put emphasis on the bow. These strokes are almost like wind in the way that they're drawn. Another effect I've seen used is altering the colors using the curve tool. This isn't really as much an effect as finishing out the color scheme to look how the artist wants it. And I'm sure there are a lot more ways that Shuin adds finishing touches, so let me know in the comments what I missed. Also, I was really short on time this week, so I wasn't able to include as much in this video as I had hoped, but I hope that's okay for now. And by the way, there's another really cool artist that I also did a style study on recently, and she is known as Hanukyu. So if you want to learn how to draw art like this, check out this video at the top right of the screen.